Another week, another film breakdown here on the Hudats Pod channel. And this one is very, very ugly. After that loss to the Rams on Thursday night, yeah, it was 30 to 22, but that score does not really dictate or show how bad this loss really was. And on film, everything from start to finish was just so ugly. Nothing really looked good. And we're going to dive into just kind of all of that on this episode of the Hudats Pod. So why don't we just dive into all of it? Welcome back to the Hoodouts Pod, everyone. I'm Caden Janish, your host. Make sure while you're here, you hit that subscribe button. Check me out on social media. The links are in the description if you want to go ahead and do so. This is a brutal week, man. These are typically my favorite, and they still are my favorite episodes and pods to do each week. But this one, this one was ugly. Like, you could just see how outcoached Dennis Allen's defense was compared to Sean McVay's offense. And from even the Saints offensive perspective, there was just nothing going on. There was not a single player in this game, offense, defense, or special teams, who I thought played a good game. Corners didn't play good. I thought Demario Davis had probably a slouch of a game, especially for him. Defensive line slouches per usual because they aren't a good defensive line. Safeties, I just whatever. I thought they had a pretty rough game as well. Offensively, offensive line did not do very well. Derek Carr, yeah. He has three touchdowns and 300 yards. I think that's what the stat line was, but let's be real. About half of that came in garbage time. And for those of you, I got some comments saying garbage time isn't real. It was only 30 to 7, blah, blah, blah. You can definitely tell that there is garbage time, defense, prevent defense, whatever, quarters, coverage being called, which is typically, okay, lay back a little bit. We don't have to go all full out blitzes and stuff like that, which is what the Rams did. Derek Carr's stats were inflated due to the Saints being down by so much. And the receivers, I mean, Shahid and Olave, I thought they had good games, but even then, Olave still had some pretty bad plays. He was playing on a bad ankle, so I'm not going to give him too much shit. I know he probably played through a lot. I'm not trying to diminish anyone, but there is just... I took really nothing positive away from this game other than they did a good job throwing it to Chris Olave early and often, but even then, it just seemed like Derek Carr and Olave probably could have better chemistry and everything is just a mess right now so why don't we but before we dive into all this I'm not a film guru I'm not an analyst I'm well whatever I'm just a fan showing some clips to an audience and breaking it down what was good what was bad I'm not saying I could do better but people are still gonna you know say what they say so why don't we just dive into um, some of the film that we have here ready for the Hudats pod also, before we dive into it, sorry about this, but the film was so bad that I got to a point where I was almost gathering every single play to put in here because I was like, this is terrible. So there's only a few clips in here, some clips in here, like the typical clips that we have, but there's probably like triple the amount of clips that we should have had in here because that's how bad it was. So we had to cut back on a lot of plays that there's a lot of plays in here. Uh, there's a lot of plays that I left out that I wanted to put in here, but due to time and stuff like that, um, I had to leave them out. So why don't we just dive into it real quick? Okay, so this opening play that we have here is actually probably one of the... We do have some positive plays in here, and this is one of them. You're going to get play action on Camara and get Moreau kind of coming across, acting like he's going to block on this side. You can get play action, Car's going to drop back. You get a decent protection. Olive's going to come up and kind of curl, cut inside. And then you're going to get kind of a crossing route and then just kind of in-breaking routes. And then this is the concept. You get man-to-man -man coverage from the looks of it. So why don't we start playing the clip? Um, here's Aaron Donald, I believe. This is Aaron Donald going up against James Hurst. And Andres Pete Morrow comes across to help out there. Derek Carr does a nice job avoiding the pressure and stepping up into the pocket, having nice awareness, something we haven't seen too much from him this season in terms of just having pocket awareness, but this is a nice job from him. And as you can see, they're in man coverage, single high safety, so his eyes and his hips are towards covering him. He's coming across, leaving all of this open space these two guys were covering Camara and Moro, so now that's why there's so much space in the middle 
once Carr sets his feet and gets away from that pressure, Olave cuts inside on this like little curl and breaking route. And he has a lot of space and Carr hits him. And they're able to connect on a nice play and pick up a first down. Um, why don't we see the protection from this side? Here, this looks like Aaron Donald. Um, double team. He, this guy, is not coming down immediately because he sees Moreau coming across. And if you are unblocked on the edge, chances are there is a blocker or a guard or someone is running at you. In some instances, especially the Saints have run this before, he comes this way and then cuts back with Moreau leading. So he's waiting to see what Alvin Kamara and this blocker and Foster Moreau are doing. Ruiz, terrible hand approach, attacks the side shoulder and doesn't get hands on on the pads. By on the pads, I mean, the, no, whoops. By not on the pads, I mean he didn't attack the chest plate. That's where you want to attack. He attacks the inside shoulder, bad leverage. Car, nice job avoiding it. More, and Car is able to find Chris Olave for a nice play. One of my biggest issues so far, this or just in general for the Saints this season, has been their lack of the ability to run the football. You're going to see Hurst and McCoy get on a double team. It looks like on this guy, Hurst is going to trip, fall, whatever. You can't help that, but the guy he's supposed to get off the double team and block is just going to blitz through and make the tackle. Run is to the left. So... Hurst is supposed to get off this double team off of 95 and end up blocking the linebacker. Then it looks like this tight end, I think this is Juwan, gets on this double team then gets off to get to the second level, which he does. Linebacker, who's supposed to be blocked by James Hurst, gets through the gap. Morrell can't really finish his block. Um, if this guy is blocked, there's maybe a length for Kamara to get a few yards, but even then, this guy is also off his block. And there's just nothing really for Alvin Kamara to go. There's just terrible offensive line play. Here's a better angle, but you can see James Hurst right here. He's going to trip. The guy he's supposed to cut block shoots through the gap. Moreau needs to get a better block and better leverage and angle on that block. Kamara tries to cutting up and ends up losing about a yard, I believe. I believe this was the fourth down, the first fourth down of the game. You get Taysom Hill running across. It looks like this is Juwan. He's going to kind of sit. He's going to come up. I think that Shahid and Olave is going to run an out route. Um, that's a terrible arrow. There we go. Not that much better, but um, Rams are blitzing. And what we've learned so far this season is that Derek Carr is not a very good quarterback under pressure. So the, what the Rams did is what every team should do when they, whenever they face the Saints. Third and fourth down situations, send five guys. And because, it's, one, the Saints offensive line is not that good. Two, card cannot handle pressure very well. And three, when your quarterback can't handle pressure very well and you are in man-to-man -man coverage... He's going to throw some passes or take some hits. This is fourth down. Jamal Williams, Rams send one, two, three, four, five. And they double team Aaron Donald, I believe, which is smart. Also, not a big fan of the route concept and the play design. Chris Olave is having struggle getting off the press coverage. Why don't we rewind back a few seconds and see. Here's Olave. He kind of struggles getting off of... This press coverage, physicality, the sticks are at the 20, 40 yard line. And by the time Carr is sacked, Olave's route, which I'm assuming was one of the main routes, hasn't even gotten there. You have two routes kind of in the middle of each other. So throwing to Juwan would be stupid because there's a net extra defender. So now you have basically one defender covering two players. And a go route on fourth down, I just don't see the logic in that. Like, run some like curls or smash concept or something. And Derek Carr ends up getting sacked, doesn't have enough time. Nowhere to really throw. Play design was not the best. I agreed with going for it on fourth down, but um, did not like the execution or the play call. Jamal Williams right here. Nothing much Carr could also do 
Can't throw it to Taysom because you got three defenders covering two guys, which is insane. Why are they in the same spot? It's just an overall mess on this whole play. There's nowhere really he could have gone with the football as well. Just an overall mess. Here, um, I believe this is the Rams' second play. Something the Saints had a huge struggle with was the concept of motion, which just shows the lack of preparation that this team has with Dennis Allen at the head coach. I mean, motion is such a basic thing. I believe this guy is going to go in motion and then come back. Why don't we see what happens? So he sends Cooper Cup in motion. Okay, he doesn't come back. But basically that motion, no one follows him, meaning the Saints are in zone coverage. Alante Taylor had a lot of trouble in this game with his eyes being caught in the backfield. So Yadam thinks, from the looks at they're in zone coverage, so he's supposed to be covering back here. Looks like Taylor thinks he's supposed to be in main coverage on this guy. But in reality, he probably should have been out in the flats covering Higby. As you can see right here, his eyes are on the quarterback. Yadam probably has a deep cover three-ish hook curl zone. And Higby's just wide open in the flats. And that's just a simple thing the Rams did. That motion really hurt Alante Taylor right there. And we could probably get a better angle of it. That single motion... Zone coverage, Alante or Yitam did not follow him. Alante now has his eyes in the backfield, gets messed up with what his assignment is supposed to be. And I'm assuming his job was to be out in the flats. This is a insane play call from Sean McVay. Like you're gonna get three motions here. You're gonna get Cup for who's gonna end up lining up right here. Then you can get the running back who's going to line up right here. I believe it's Puka who goes in motion right before the snap. And then he's going to run a drag. Then you're going to get two guys kind of running in breaking routes. A Debo follows Cup. So why don't we get to right before the snap is about to um, be snapped. Motion one. Motion two. Motion three. Basically, man coverage. All of this middle of the field, aside from Tyran. But Stafford right now knows that he is on him. Yitam is on that guy. Or Puka. And Adebo is on Cup. And Alante is up here. And Tyran is on the running back. So Matthew Stafford knows man coverage, all this middle of the field. And these routes are going to interfere with the corner. And Puka is just going to have a wide open spot. And Stafford hits him in stride. Yidem has a hard time making the tackle. Would, would have been a huge tackle. Would have been about the 44 yard line. Misses it. And he's able to get an extra 10 yards on the play. Just a brilliant, brilliant play call from Sean McVay. And it just kind of shows the why having good coaching matters i mean three motions in one play and it just feels like the saints whenever they play teams that use a lot of motion they tend to struggle in stopping it and that shows lack of preparation lack of what they're doing in practice lack of the scouting and what they're doing in practice with the scouting and that's why they have all these super slow and rough starts this is a second and 18. You get the tight end in motion what that does is that shifts Demario's a little bit. You're going to get the running back up the middle. These guys are going to double team. Then he's going to get off his double team and get up to the second level. Whether that's Demario or Tyran he meets first. That doesn't matter. You're just going to kind of see the terrible run defense that the Saints have. Center gets off the double team. That shift in motion gets Demario all the way out here. So now you have... Four guys over here because of that simple motion. Your best run stuffer in Demario Davis can't make a play. He does make the tackle, but he can't really make an instant play. And look at all the space the center is about to be one-on-one -on -one with. It looks like Tyron Matthew. 
and they're able to get 10 yards on a second and 18 run while the saints can barely get a yard on a first down and 10 run can't pick up a first down on third and one um good coaching man good coaching from sean mcveigh the coaching matters he doesn't even get on the double team saunders just kind of gets approached by the guard immediately cam jordan just kind of gets pushed out a little bit adiba does a nice job coming in and closing in kind of creating a little bit of body space um but he's still able to get 10 yards on a second and 18 run all right right here you're gonna get motion from hill he's gonna line up at the tight end spot no one follows him, so you can assume it's going to be man. It's not always man, but if it's zone coverage, this is a nice play call, which it does end up being zone. Just simple curls, and then you're going to get a play action from Alvin Kamara. And in zone coverage, those curls and hooks typically do a nice job getting you yardage. Play action, nice pocket. You see the zones. Um... This is a zone you want to attack, or this is a zone you want to attack. And Carr ends up attacking those zones. Gets it to Rashid Shahid for a nice play. We'll see the other angle of it. Where's Aaron Donald? Here he is. Why don't we see what the Saints did right here? There's Taysom Hill. James Hurst and Andres Pete block him. Hurst does a nice job there on Aaron Donald, all things considered. And he finds Shahid for a nice play. I'll give him that. This is what I mean when in previous video or in previous videos I've mentioned um, Derek Carr has been an issue. Yes, he is an issue. He is definitely not the answer. But the Saints have bigger issues other than quarterback. I mean, the offensive line is just really bad. Andres Pete is serviceable, but he's not going to help you long term james hurst is fine you prefer if he was a backup mccoy is the only consistent like solid starter ruiz has had his highs and lows this season ryan ramchek is closer to retirement with that knee injury than he is to being in the middle of his career you probably have like a year or two left with ryan ramchek landon young struggling i don't even think this is a third down and the rams are able to get a sack here so they do a nice job chipping zero. Hurst just gets beat. We'll just have to look at the other angle because I don't want to break it down from here. Okay. Hurst, one-on-one -on -one with 91. Smart. They're double-teaming Aaron Donald, one-on-one, one-on-one. And Jamal's going to kind of chip a little bit, help give Pete a little bit of help. And Hurst just flat-out gets beat. And if you... And even if Hurst doesn't get beat, Aaron Donald got off that double team from Ruiz and McCoy. Um, just a really bad offensive line and a really bad offense. Another excellent play call from Sean McVay. We get Puka in motion. I believe Cup is going to run a seam. No one follows Puka Nakua henting or showing that it is a zone coverage. To Mario Davis... And the safety are going to follow this seam route. I believe this is the guy who runs the seam. Someone runs the seam route. Puka's going to come over here, run an in-breaking route, and he's going to run an out-breaking route. So why don't we hit play? No one follows, showing zone coverage. As you can see, Demario Davis, who covers the middle of the field in some situations, is following Cup on this deep seam which this is his job to do the safety over here is following this guy and tyran there's no work literally for him on this side of the field so he's going to provide some help to demario davis what this does though with demario who's typically over the middle he's downfield you got the safety coming over here the corner coming this way and the other safety up here that and this guy is coming up covering the running back all of this is going to be open for Puka Nakua. Stafford, you can't simply play zone against a guy like Matthew Stafford. He's just too good. And with these weapons, it just works so well, especially with Sean McVay at head coach and calling plays. And there's the motion. And the Saints don't have a good enough front four to be playing zone because they can't get any pressure. 
Very clean pocket. First down, finds Nakua for a huge play. I like this play from Pete Carmichael. We're going to get Juwan on a wheel. We're going to get Shahid kind of running a post, taking away this safety a little bit. Get Olavi in motion, and these guys are just going to kind of run in breaking routes. Alvin Kamara does an excellent job picking up the blitz right here. AKA great blitz pickup. He gets up immediately. This is great car great throw from Derek Carr under some pressure to Juwan Johnson. Throws it into a spot to where he's going to be as opposed to where he currently is. And a great throw and a great connection between him and Juwan Johnson. Something that I wanted to see all season, but we just haven't seen it. There's the great blitz pickup from Alvin Kamara. Here's another angle of the catch. Here's the touchdown play to Rashid Shahid. You're just going to run a simple post, and Olave's going to come across and run a curl. What this does, one of the safeties, single high, whatever it may be, has to bite on one of them. He bites on Chris Olave. You get the play action, which stalls these guys in their jobs a little bit. Here's the play action. Now the safety is now all eyes on Chris Olave from those two. And who knew play action, deep shot to one of your better players works. And watch Chris Olave. Ball is being thrown like right now. He's already celebrating before he turns around. And it's a touchdown. Beautiful play design. Perfect time to call it. Great throw, great catch, great route, etc. Great protection. Touchdown. Here was the third down. This one, great play call. Terrible execution from both Carr and and Olave into the backfield. Olave is motioned man to man coverage. Juwan Johnson's going to come up here and kind of give Olave a whole bunch of space over the middle. It's basically a free play. We haven't seen this since week one in the passing game. And perfect play call. Third and six. Rams have been basically sending pressure all night long on third down. You get man to man coverage. And what's going to happen is he's going to come up. This guy's going to kind of get blocked a little bit. He's going to Texas route, but the throw is a bullet in behind him, and Olave drops it. Just terrible execution from both parties. Look at all the space if they can connect on this play. He's not scoring a touchdown. Carr needs to put this pass out here and lead him. It's high and behind him. Olave, if he wants to be a wide receiver one and take that next step and be the guy. Um, the Saints traded a first round, a third round, and a f they didn't do the Trevor pending trade to get Olave, but um, they basically traded a third round pick, a fourth round pick, in their current one of their first round picks that year to get him. And I think he has the talent and potential to do so. He needs to take that next step for that trade to work out, in my opinion. He needs to be able to make these catches. And I know he's injured. I know the throw could have been better. I know this. All in the, I know all this, and I know all that. He's got to be able to come down with this. Car needs to be able to throw a better ball. Yeah, hit him in the hands. Wide receiver. If you want to be a wide receiver, one you have to be able to make difficult catches, and that's a difficult catch right there. One he should have caught. He shouldn't be in that position to have to make a difficult catch. But wide receiver ones, guys who take that next step in the NFL, guys who are in that tier one of like Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, you got to be able to make those catches. And um, I hope we see a leap from him next season. I think he has potential to be a 1,500-yard guy. He's just got to be able to come down with some of these uh, catches. I know the injury hurts and all that. Um still if you're playing and it hits you in the hands you got to be able to catch it throw has to be better and then that takes you to a fourth down which was huge in the game probably should not have gone for it this is one is not in Derek Carr um, why don't we just play it real quick pressure gets to him immediately and he kind of has to rush the throw just to give a guy a chance and it doesn't work you can get Juwan on on a corner I don't want to do a better corner in breaking route. I think this is an in breaking route, and he just kind of runs a post. 
one, these routes take too long to develop on the fourth down and six. Two, you know they're going to be sending pressure. Do like a quick in breaking. I don't. I don't care. This is not a good play for this situation. Three, this is the first instance, but he did this all game. Uh, Carmichael had so many plays called where two guys end up in the same spot, so one guy was covering two receivers. Car's under pressure, has to throw it out here, and it just does not work out. There is really no one he could throw to. Um, if he had maybe half a second more, he could maybe make a better throw. But there's nothing Card could have done better here. Jamal Williams, terrible pass protection. Aaron Donald with the stunt. And he can't step up into the pocket. He's not a guy who's going to roll out and scramble and make an excellent throw. Um, and ends up being incomplete. This is a crazy play from Matthew Stafford and... I don't know which receiver it is, but this guy's going to come in motion. He's going to run like a reverse whip route. You get some of these guys coming across. He's going to come out and then extend the play and help out Matthew Stafford. He's going to run an out route. And basically, this is what happens when you don't have a good pass rush. Pocket, pocket, all this time, all this time. Okay, I mean, he didn't really have to leave the pocket, in my opinion. Rolls out left. Yitem. Is looking at Stafford, should be on the receiver, and he knows he gets beat at this point. Needs to get his head around, keep his eyes on the receiver, and just a brutal play. Again, some of these plays, the secondary had good coverage, but when your front four can't get a sack in, why don't we count 1-1000, 2-1000, 3-1000, 4-1000, 5-1000. So five seconds in the pocket, just the pocket, then extends it another two and a half seconds outside. If you can't get sacks in seven and a half seconds, your secondary is going to be cooked. And this is what happens also when you play an actual good offense and not Tommy DeVito and Wondell Robinson and Bryce Young and DJ Chark. This is a real offense. The best offense the Saints defense has played all season. They got exposed, and they're probably not as good as we thought they were because of their opponents. Right here is the interception. You can get a go route. You can get a drag corner and a post. And Carr feels the sense of pressure, very similar to his interception in Carolina. There's nowhere really to go with this football right now. He ends up trying to get it right here to throw it into a window over here. But he won. Just that's a difficult throw to make. I don't even know if that's a throw Drew Brees could make. He's expecting this receiver to take this corner with them. He's expecting to. He's trying to place the ball to this area of the field, and he just simply doesn't have the. I don't want to say he doesn't have the talent to do so, but he doesn't have the talent to make this throw, in my opinion especially in this kind of pocket as well. No one's also open. And it is just a poorly thrown pass. He just doesn't see this defender the whole time. And there is the run back. Um, here's the pass protection view from it. This guy's gonna come down and blitz. Camara misses the block. He's under pressure. This is a throw he should not have made. The pressure didn't help. And it was a bad read. And we're not going to show the whole return because we don't need to see that. This is what I was talking about, about garbage time. The Rams are only going to rush three guys. They're in zone prevent defense. You're going to get Shahid kind of running across and Olave coming across. And Carr has m so much time to make a pass on this play. This is what I mean by garbage time. Why don't we play it? Three guys are blitzing. You're telling me this is not a prevent defense when you're up 23 points in the fourth quarter? This is a prevent defense. This is a garbage time defense. Play action. Car hits Olave. He's open. He's able to make a nice yards after the catch. 
and get out of bounds. But this is a garbage time defense. Half of those garbage time stats that Derek Carr has are garbage time stats. Two of those three touchdowns came in garbage time. 300 total yards, about 100 of them. 120 came in garbage time. So while the stat sheet says he had a good game, and while the score was close, it was not a close game. He did not have the best game. No one had a good game. Yeah, you're, you're telling me that's not garbage time defense right there. Fourth down and seven. Go route. Go route. Sit. Chip block. Drag. No idea what kind of play call this is when you have to get to the 28 yard line. This is the 28 yard line. Don't know why this is the play design. No idea. Initially, this is probably the read. And maybe if Carr holds on a little bit longer, Juwan takes this guy with him. He can maybe make this throw, but why are you in a situation to where you can only throw to two guys at the sticks for the first down? Why are two guys going to the end zone? It just does not make really any sense to me. And Juwan is not able to get the first down, obviously. Here's the other angle of it. Prentice, another thing I haven't mentioned basically throughout the video. A lot of these crucial third down, fourth downs, Alvin Kamara is not on the field. I get it. maybe pass protection isn't his best suit. Then put him out at receiver. I'd rather have Alvin Kamara at receiver with Olave and Shahid than have A.T. Perry and Juwan in. That's just my opinion. Prentice doesn't even block on this play. You can, if Carr holds on another second, half second, he can maybe make this throw. Difficult throw to make, but if he times it right with the right uh, anticipation, he can make that throw. Um, dumps it off to Juwan, and he just simply can't make the play. We have one more play left. Something we haven't seen all year, the Saints did here, pick routes. They're going to try and do a pick route up here. They can't do it. Oh. Um, we're going to do a pick route here, which works better because this guy is further back from Juwan than this guy is from Shahid. Shahid also is not a, the best red zone physical guy. Going to get a little bit of a chip route. Not the best chip route setup, but it was enough to set Juwan up for success. If you look at the top at Shahid, and it looks like A.T. Perry. Um doesn't work because that guy is playing too close. I would have liked to have Olave run this trip instead of have AT Perry run this trip instead of Chris Olave simply because he is a bigger body, but it does work out well. And they end up scoring the touchdown in garbage time. Here's the other angle of it, and that is our last play. That will do it for this episode of the Hudas Pod film breakdown of the Saints and Rams. Really brutal one, and this is just the stuff that I showed. There was so many more plays in here that I could have put on here. This, it would have been like a two-hour episode. It was really bad. But even though it was bad, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you, I don't know why you would enjoy watching this team get shit on by the Rams. But hopefully you did get some entertainment out of it. And I will see you all in the next episode, breaking down and looking at the Saints and Buccaneers preview on Sunday. So I will see you all then. Check me on social media. Hit that subscribe button. Hope you all have a good rest of your day. And I will see you all next time.